Hello and welcome to the HBM Frequently Asked Questions video series. My name is Jason Osborne, I'm an application engineer out of Detroit, Michigan. Today we're going to talk about dual range transducers and if this is a real thing. So this applies to um, all of our torque transducers, uh, our rotary torque transducers, our T40 and also our T12 series. So let's talk about the, the rotor and stator a little bit. I've got a T12 up on the screen, or a T12HP up on the screen. Um, this one here has a rotor uh, that floats, so it's not connected to the, the stator at all. The stator is basically an antenna, and then this is where also you um, would plug in all of your cables for your torque and speed. So let's take the rotor and do a cross section. Um, in a couple of my other videos, I've mentioned um, the, the application uh, of this rotor itself, but I wanted to go into it uh, a little bit here. Uh, I want to talk about our strain gauges. So HPM, we produce uh, strain gauges that can be sold on the market, and we also have strain gauges that are spe uh, very specific to our applications, like our torque transducers, for example. Um, these are proprietary torque transducers, uh, strain gauges that every uh, torque transducer that we have carries in. So unlike some of our competitors where they would buy uh, strain gauges from somebody else, um, we make our own and, and put everything in uh, our torque transducers ourselves. So let's take a look at this. This is a, a cross section. Um, it looks like a capital H. So on the um, vertical parts of that, that's where the actual antenna is and the mounting uh, holes. In the horizontal part, um, that's where we have all of our strain gauges and um, our Wheatstone bridge. So on ours, it's on the interior um, of this machined uh, pocket. So as it spins, it's getting pushed inside uh, of the, the, the metal instead of being pushed off and pulled off. Um, so this increases our accuracy and our linearity and hysteresis uh, as the, the rotor spins. So let's dive into this rotor a little bit. So let's figure out if there's an actual dual range. So on our, um, our rotors themselves, they're all machined and balanced uh, for a specific range. So in this example, I have um, a thousand newton meter um, transducer. Um, so this, uh, the metal that's, that's on the actual transducer is set up for the thousand newton meters. That's the, the normal range, and then it's also set up for uh, obviously a little bit of an overshoot, um, just in case if you over uh, torque it. But there's also, that's the limitation. So let's dive into this a little bit to see if there was um, a dual range, a quote dual, dual range uh, torque transducer. So same idea, um, a thousand newton meter torque transducer, but in this size, we're also doing a 50 newton meter. So in the yellow here, I've mentioned that this one is set up for um, the 1,000 newton meter. In the red, uh, this one is set up for the 50 newton meter. So if that's the case, if your weakest link is going to be your 50 newton meter, the thinner range um, of your actual rotor. So if you try to, to do a 1,000 newton meter, that's going to be way over the 50 newton meter range, and you're going to end up uh, with the transducer in pieces, uh, because that's going to be a fuse at that point. It's going to be your weakest link. So you really can't um, outwit physics. So how do we do this? So on the top, uh, I've mentioned um, some transducers, they have a dual range with two strain gauges, two Wheatstone bridges, and two different amplifiers for two different diameters. And outside diameter and inside diameters uh, because they have to try to push the strain gauges you know through that. So that's going to be your, your weakest link like I'd mentioned. So on ours, um, the way that we do um, ours is one strain gauge zone, uh, one strain gauge cross section. Again ours is on the inside. Uh, our strain gauges are, are on the inside. And then they're set up by two different amplifiers. So how does this work? So if you want to do a dual range um, on our torque transducers, what you end up doing is you do two separate calibrations. 
you do one calibration for the full range, and then you do one calibration for the um, smaller range that you would like. So if you want, in this case, if you wanted a 1,000 newton meter torque transducer set up to, you know, say 100, um, you would do two, two cals. You would do one cal at um, the 100% and then the other one um, at, the, at the lower percent. So here's an example of one of our cal sheets. Um, on this one here and with the yellow arrow, I've mentioned um, this is set up for 100% uh, of, of the load. Um, but when you do a, a separate cal, this number would, would obviously be your second number. So let's look at a T12 and let's see how we can really do this. Um, on the T12, uh, for the torque and for the speed, you have a torque low pass 1 and a torque low pass 2 uh, option. The low pass 1 and low pass 2 um, are set up that you could add different filters to it and get different readings. So I'm going to dive into the T12 assistant. So I have a T12 um, assistant set up with a 1,000 newton meter torque transducer. I'm using a CAN uh, terminating resistor, and then I'm also using the CAN um, setup to USB. This is a, a USB to CAN um, option, so it's going right into my computer to pull up the T12 assistant. So on your T12 assistant, you're going to go through and set up the password and passcode to get in, into the actual transducer. Parameterized uh, transducer, under that first tab there is torque. Um, the torque low pass 1 and low pass 2 uh, you'll see there, and then you can add different filters to it. So your torque low pass 1 is going to be from 0 0.5 hertz all the way up to 4K um, for your options. Your torque low pass 2 is basically the same thing. It's 0 0.05 to 100 hertz. So it's a little bit different from each one. But with the um, torque range uh, set up, you can get the different values for your different uh, readings. So this can be read um, in your torque display values. And then it can also be put out on CAN. So with CAN, you can put in the different values. Uh, for example, your torque low pass 1 is code 384 uh, plus a module address. Um, and this, this goes into um, very good detail on our, our CAN manual. But I wanted to show you that you can split this up and, and for low pass 1 and torque low pass 2. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any further questions, please give me a call at 1-800-578-4260 or send an email to support at usa.hbm.com. Thanks. Have a nice day.